Hey guys, welcome to part 2 of my high waist skirt crochet video tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how I continue on with the main part of the skirt. And as always, thanks for watching! Let's begin! So first we're going to be using DK weight yarn. For this video, I'll be using Paintbox Cotton DK. Scissors, two crochet hooks, 3.5 and 4.25 mm. We're also going to need a darning needle, some stitch markers, and a measuring tape. So if you came straight from the part 1 video, then this is where we left off. We're going to continue on with an X stitch detailing row. I like to start off with a chain 4 and continue with an X stitch. I'm not going to fully explain what I do here for the X stitches, but I did slow down, um, or I did my best to slow down for you guys so you, you can see what exactly I'm doing here. So this part will change depending on how many rows you decided to do for your waistband. Um, so if you have any more questions about this part, or if you need a more um, in-depth explanation or slow down video of how I do my X stitches, feel free to let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to make a video for you guys. Coming up at the end of our X stitch detailing row, I did have an extra stitch left over from my last triple crochet. So I just decided to triple crochet the last two stitches together. Like you see here. And then we're going to slip stitch into the fourth chain from the beginning of the row and then we're going to chain one turn piece and half double crochet into that chain one stitch And half double crochet into the next stitch. And we're pretty much going to half double crochet across. And I personally like to half double crochet into the back loops only of the uh, chain two stitches. Well, if you would call them stitches inside the X stitch. These two right here. And then pretty much continue that around and join the piece at the end of the row. Now we're at the end of our first half double crochet row. One thing to keep in mind is that the chain one and turn step will act as your skirt's back seam, if you will. And after we join the row with a slip stitch, we're going to half double crochet across and pretty much repeat the step until you reach the end of row eight and we're gonna start increasing for your body's curves. Okay. 
So I am a couple of half double crochet rows in, but I forgot to mention that after the first half double crochet row we made, after the X stitch detailing row, we won't be putting our last half double crochet stitch into the same chain one stitch from the beginning of the row. And after your total of eight rows into the main skirt, this is what your half double crochet row should end up looking like. Once we reach the end of row 8, we're going to lay the piece flat and place your two stitch markers on either side of your skirt. We're going to want to make sure both stitch markers are the same amount of stitches apart from your skirt's back chain 1 and turn seam. After you place your stitch markers, continuing from the back seam, we're going to half double crochet like normal, but now we're actually going to put two half double crochet into each stitch marker stitch. So for our gradual increase, which is what we want for the skirt, we will want to do an increase row after every three non-increase rows. So the non-increase rows will obviously be the regular half double, cro half double crochet across. Once you reach the desired length of where you want your slit to start, you're going to cut yarn and fasten off. For this particular skirt that I'm making for my sister, she did request that she wanted the slit to be fairly high since she works at the pool day club, so I decided to start the slit after one set of increase, meaning one increase row and three non-increase row. Taking a small piece of scrap yarn, you can use this as your third stitch marker, and you're going to place this third stitch marker where you want your slit to start. After we place the stitch marker where we want the slit to begin, 
We're going to make a slip knot and insert your hook into that stitch, chain one and half double crochet that same stitch and the next stitch together. This is considered a decrease and we will be doing two decrease stitches in this row. This being the first decrease and the second decrease at the end of this row. Half double crocheting the last two stitches together. We do want to also keep in mind that we are still continuing the increasing pattern of one increase row after every three non-increase rows until the skirt's width reaches your desired hip measurement. Now we're at the end of the row, about to half double crochet the last two stitches. Just to clarify, the very last stitch that we will be half double crocheting together will actually be the same stitch that we did our chain one in from the beginning of the row. After that, we're going to chain two, turn piece, and half double crochet into the chain two stitch and half double crochet across. We will not be joining the row anymore and we're going to continue the increasing pattern with the slit until we reach the desired width measurement. So let's measure our skirts and compare them with our target measurements. My target waist measurement is 23 inches and with my piece laying flat, I see that it is about 12.5 in diameter making it to be around 23 inches in circumference. My target hip measurement is 31 inches, and I see that my skirt is currently at 15 inches, making it around 30 inches in circumference, which is perfect since we have our cute little slit. And once we reach our desired width, we're going to start replacing our increase rows with decrease rows. We'll always want to remember to move our stitch markers along and place them in their respective stitches for each increase or decrease row. So once you reach your stitch markers in your decrease row, you're going to half double crochet that stitch marker stitch and the next stitch together. We will pretty much repeat this step until you reach your desired overall skirt length.
Okay, so here I wanted to show you how you can identify which stitch to place your stitch marker in for your next decrease row. The same concept applies for the increase rows as well. After you make your three non-increase or non-decrease rows, you're going to want to identify the increase or decrease stitch you made. Then you're pretty much going to place the stitch marker where it lines up with the previous increase or decrease stitch row. Here is what my skirt looks like at around 15 inches in total length. For a more modest skirt, I do recommend a skirt length of at least 20 inches since this length will shrink a bit once it is actually worn. Now we're going to move on to our skirt strap. We're going to go back to our smaller 3.5mm hook and make a foundation single crochet chain strap. Since this will only be weaved through the back part of the waistband instead of around your waist, you won't need to make such a long strap, so I recommend at least 100 foundation single crochet stitches. So in this clip, I just wanted to show you guys how I tend to finish off my straps. I like to hook the yarn under to center it out and take a short to medium length piece of scrap yarn and use them as a sort of tassels for my straps. Alright, don't forget to weave in all your loose ends and attach your strap to your skirt's waistband and you've got yourself a high waist skirt with slit. If you have any questions about anything in this video, leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel and once again, thanks for watching! Thank <laughs> you.